become resistant to my help and she's now hard to handle. She hasn't been able to manage her basic day-to-day -day needs without my help, but she believes she doesn't have any problems and doesn't need help. She's easily agitated and gets upset when I try to get her dressed. I'm just frustrated and I don't know what to do. Mom, where are you? <sighs> Mom, you're gonna be late for your doctor's appointment. Are you seriously planning on wearing that? It's 80 degrees outside, Mom. Okay, look, let's wear this instead. We don't have time, okay, let's hurry. Mom, oh, God, what is wrong with you? Oh, leave me alone, I, I can do it. No, Mom, let me, gosh. Leave let me, me alone! Help you. I can help you, Mom! I don't need your help. God, leave me alone, get out! do this to me. Agitation and anxiety can manifest as difficulty sitting still, pacing, fidgeting, acting irritable, afraid, nervous, worried, or just being resistive to help from others. The behaviors are often triggered by a feeling of loss of control, misperceiving situations or actions as threats, unmet needs, inability to communicate clearly, and frustration with tasks or interactions with family and caregivers. Changes in a usual routine can also cause agitation and anxiety. People with dementia, for example, may have impaired insight towards their own cognition and ability level due to their disease. For this reason, they have a hard time understanding their limitations about what they can and cannot do. They may not realize that they need help as they do not see themselves as having problems. This can lead to agitation when someone tries to help them. How one approaches a person with dementia makes a difference. If you feel angry, impatient, or frustrated, or if you rush someone or seem irritable, they can sense your mood and react with apprehension, resistance, anxiety, and agitation. Agitation can then escalate to inappropriate behaviors, such as hitting or biting. It is very important to remember that persons with dementia react and respond to how a caregiver approaches them. How you speak to them is key. Good morning, Mom. How are you feeling? I'm all right. Okay, what would you like to wear today? You look good in the green or the blue? I Which color do you want to try don't today? I need your help. I can do it myself. Okay. I'm sorry that I made you feel that way, okay? I, you're doing very, very well, and I'm just here to help in case you need me. I know you can do it yourself very well. I love you so much, and I just want to be here when you need me. Can I stay with you? We can do this together? Okay. Good. So we are going to go to the doctors and then we can go get some ice cream. How does that sound? Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> okay, let's get you dressed, Mom. Let's lose this. We want you to be comfortable after all. Let's see. Yeah, I think this is gonna look good. Perfect. Here are a few tips on how to respond to agitation and anxiety. Allow ample time to complete tasks and don't rush your loved one. Use a gentle tone of voice, but do not be condescending. Try to keep your body language positive and use calming gestures and a gentle touch. Don't be demanding or bark orders at your loved one. Instead, provide reassurance. Speak in calming tones and phrases. Let the individual know you're there for support. Try to schedule activities around your loved one's natural routines. For instance, if your loved one is a late riser, plan doctor's appointments for the afternoon. 
Simplify the environment to reduce frustration or confusion. For example, thin out the closet so that it is easier for your loved one to see inside. Have fewer clothing options to choose from and clothes that are easy to put on. 